That is offensively delicious. Aloha, everyone. Hudson Bear here. We're back at Epcot, and it's time to return under the sea. No, it's not time for Little Mermaid yet. It's time for Coral Reef. Yeah, it's time for a revisit. It's been a very long time. I've been missing our favorite park dessert ever that they have here, and we want to go hang out with the fishes. And they changed their menu. They did change their menu. I guess that's important, too. Be sure to enjoy the fishes. See and subscribe. Remember to touch the butt. But you heard the girl. Here we have an Argyle Pinot Noir vegan and a sustainable wine. This is what we want as we are dining amongst the fishies. Very nice, like light wine. Um, it's got like a like a little bitter taste to it, but I'm not mad at it. I think it'll pair well with our, our salad. I'm not sure about my my main, but we'll see when uh, it comes around. I'm gonna give it a three and a half out of five red grapes. It's average Pinot Noir. The Princess got me really started on wine. I, I drink wine before I made the Princess, but. To me, it was just grape juice. No, it's still grape juice. And the only wine pairing that I actually do is the fact that the wine and the food goes down the same hole. But cheers. <laughs> Ooh, I do like that. One good thing. Forget YouTube. Doing all this stuff is that I have pictures of every bottle of wine that we try. So when I find one I like, I can go to the store and find it. You should do the same. This is pretty solid. I'm gonna give it a solid four out of five paws. I'm gonna find this to drink at home, somewhere. If it's below 20 bucks. to have a vegan bread that is not your normal gluten-free bread with some earth balance butter so I can just smear the heck out of it. I'm just gonna go hard on the butter. This is not good for me. It's not good for anybody. But you're on vacation, right? So just go hard on the butter when you're on vacation. Calories don't count at Disney. Hot butter your bread. This is how bread should be served everywhere. 4.75 out of 5 breads. This is excellent bread. This is bread you brag about to all your friends. The princess is like bread you brag about to your friends. What friends? Other than the couple friends you've seen in these videos, the newer ones. Either way. The princess is uh she treats butter like it's peanut butter and jelly. I'm more of like a less is more kind of bear. But the question is, what do you do with your butter? Do you size on the inside? Do you put it on top? Is it a sandwich to you? I can go either way. Mm. Now that is dinner roll. Nice and soft and fluffy. Mm. Nice brown on the top. That brings back memories of fighting your sibling for the last roll of the dinner table. Four and a half out of five plus. Bear and I decided to share this beautiful plant-based salad. And the server was super nice. He brought us two plates. But what he doesn't realize, and what a lot of you might not realize on our channel, is that I'm the bear. So I'm the one that's not gonna eat the plate that doesn't have any manners, at least in this instance. I like the crunchy nuts. It's got a really light, light citrusy taste to it so it's very much like a spring salad which is great for the season 
I think it would pair well with a white wine. And the pomegranate gives it like a nice little flair. I'm into all of the the items that are on here, a little toppings, a little fixings. It's a very beautiful salad. It's just very citrus forward. So it encapsulates all that is flower and garden in the salad. So if you're not into citrus, don't get the salad. If you're into citrus, you want something like spring forward, this is a salad for you. I'm gonna give it a four out of five salads. It tosses my salad. Just slightly though, not all the way. Princess is out here spilling secrets. I was never gonna tell you guys that she was actually the bear. I was gonna take that to my grave, but now you know. For all, hopefully, two or 3,000 of you to watch this video. I got dreams, I got dreams. But I like a good, I like a good salad, I like rabbit food. Uh, honestly, you could feed me Disney salads, well, some Disney salads. I would eat most of these all day long, sweet or not. Look at that roughage. Look at that greenery. I've got almost nothing else on the fork but leaves. But we're gonna rock with it. Ooh. I usually worry about citrus forward salads. They're gonna be overly citrus and you get like no balance. Citrus is fine. But too much citrus like in excess is really not my jam. It's like Drinking Sprite too fast. Let's, no, we got some actual stuff in the fork. Let's see how these rest of this filling taste. Mm. Mm. The walnuts definitely help balance out the citrus. Like a nice earthy to like that bright citrus flavor. I wish the walnuts were a little bit more broken up to be easy to spread out with the rest of the salad. Because that's definitely what you need to sort of like balance with that flavor because they're just concentrated in the middle and they're pretty big pieces, pretty hard to get on the fork. Other than that, I like it. It's a salad with potential. And we do like potential here. Three out of five plus. for you guys. Let me just start off by saying this ravioli is one big mf -er. So big it sticks to all the other raviolis which tells me it's not cooked properly. Cut it in half. Let's see what this half looks like. What does that look like to you? Do those innards look good to you? Tell me in the comments what you think about this innards. Tell me what you think about this pasta. What does the uh, consistency look like? Does this, this uh, dough look like it's properly cooked to you? Because to me it looks like a little too al dente. But let's see. Now those mushrooms are basil forward. So all the texture that I don't typically like with mushrooms is completely gone. And it brings in like a new flavor that I really like. I'm excited to dip bread into the broth, but for like the pasta on its own, even though it does look al dente, it is packed full of flavor. I don't think I would ever would have expected to give a mushroom dish a 5 out of 5, but this is a princessity's item, you guys. I don't even know what's happening to my life right now. I love a mushroom dish. Somebody pinch me or something. Throw me in a shark tank. I don't know what's happening. So good. I don't want to share. I'll be honest. The size of the construction of these ravioli sort of reminds me of the non or non-plant-based goat cheese ravioli from California Grill. 
massive design in size. One thing I don't usually like though is like if you're gonna put my ravioli in a sauce, I want like a thick sauce with like some viscosity to it. This is like almost ravioli in a soup. And I, it's not, not usually my jam. If I wanted something in the soup that was pasta shaped, I'd go with like a tortellini or something else. But my ravioli, they're already delicate enough without submerging them underwater in a restaurant. That is offensively delicious. Like, offensively. I think I've joked about it before. If you're gonna eat food in front of the animals, it should probably be a vegan restaurant. Now that's never going to happen in Walt Disney. You're never gonna have a 100% vegan restaurant. But this, this right here, and dishes like it, are definitely below the resume of why Disney can do an all vegan restaurant. This is delicious, you feel like you're missing nothing. The mushroom with the tomato and the broth, it all works. It's a nice flavorful bite, it's nice and hearty. The flavors combine to do something beautiful without feeling like anything's overpowering anything else. And even if you're not like a mushroom person, I think this is a good dish. If you're looking for a dish with no all meat, this is for you. This whole restaurant is probably good for you. It didn't used to be, but if you want no alt meat, this is probably the place to go. It's a four and a half out of five. It's solid. I can do with more reasonably sized ravioli and a little bit less raw. Other than that, it's dang good. Dang with a capital G. Not a D, a G. Gangster. Meat. surprised at how much I like this pasta. It's 100% a mushroom stuff ravioli, but like, I like it more than the pasta that I had at um, our most recent review at Totori Alverno. I like it more than most mushroom dishes that we've had, like, in general in the last year or two. And I'm just really surprised. So like, if mushroom texture is a problem for you, like it is for me, you're not actually gonna experience that in this dish. And I think that's where you can get a little bit confused. Obviously, if you're allergic to mushrooms, don't get this dish. But outside of that, I think be adventurous and try it because it's, it's an experience. mahi-mahi with the grill marks and everything with a corn salsa on top of a garlic rice with a little cilantro crema here on the side. Before I get to the food, none of the vegans are watching anymore. If you are, cover your ears, turn off the captions. This is a beautiful tank. It's a very beautiful tank. But remember, every stingray you see, it's on site. Without fail. If you know, you know. Now back to our return to the program. The fish. I like a good corn salsa. It is not something that I would have devised to go on the mahi. But you know what? We're here now and ready to party. I'm very picky around mahi. If you ruin mahi for me, we'll be in the same house, dog house that is, with ABC Commissary. The mahi is nice and flaky. The rice, tad overcooked. The corn salsa gives it like a sort of like a peppery sweetness on top of the fish. It goes really well. It's cooked wonderfully. I can probably do a little bit more of the cream it's spread around the plate. And then it's, it's a good fish dish. It's not a wow fish dish. It's not like if you love mahi, run here for this fish. But I've definitely had better mahi mahi in my life. It was a pleasure. It was a solid nice. dish okay. that I'm not upset about ordering. I give it three and a half out of five plus. Now 
Here we have our beautiful vegan dessert. It is a Bailey's almond cream with a Jack Daniels. And you might be asking yourself, well, princess, Bailey's isn't vegan. This is Bailey's almond. So Bailey's almond is vegan. I will tell you though, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat the raspberries, and I know this is Bear's favorite dessert, and I'm here for the Bailey's almond. But I will tell you that Jack Daniels, even though it is marked as plant-based, is not vegan. Jack Daniels uses a 14-inch piece of wool to filter their liquor, which makes them not vegan. Now that is a subjective vegan, so I mean, being vegan is a spectrum. If you're plant-based, you may not care about that as much, which is why it's marked as plant-based. As a vegan, for the animals, exploiting commercial wool is more, is a different realm from shearing sheep that are required to be sheared. So, there is a difference between the two, and it's always about the commercial aspect that makes it not vegan. So I'm going to take one bite because it is marked as plant-based knowing full well that Jack Daniels does use wool to filter their liquor. It's not actually vegan. Now I just destroyed this. The innards are all messed up. Hopefully it looks good. At least from my perspective, I got, oh, I got fall on it. All right, so I'm going to try this. This is my one and only bite. Cheers. Vera and I have not had this dessert since they wrapped it in chocolate and redid it from what it was before. Mostly it was like the old cake, but wrapped in chocolate with some fixings. I personally am not a fan of this. I like the old way. And it, I mean, if I had to pick, I would pick the Chef Tony way where he surrounded it with strawberry syrup. I gave me strawberries and then like, I got to just eat like a strawberry with this cake. That is the way. The way they serve it here, not so much. I'm gonna give it a two out of five cakes. This is not the cake for me. I feel like this is gonna be Bear's cake of the day. Regardless of whether or not this thing has changed, it has. It's now encased in the chocolate ganache. It, uh, it's definitely smaller than it used to be. It was longer before. Now it's wider but shorter. Pulling hairs. Everything portion size here at Disney has changed. That's something the world just wants to get used to. We're gonna continue to eat here. I'm not saying you have to eat here. If you don't eat at Disney, bring it back lunch. Nothing wrong with that. So, we're gonna dig into this Bailey's almond and Jack Daniels cake. Yes, this has reigned supreme for a long time. It's one of my favorite desserts on property. That was its previous version. Let's see if the new version holds weight. Or at least holds its Jack Daniels. Like every real adult should. I definitely I taste to the bones of what it used to be. They're there. The smoothness, the consistency, that creaminess of the actual cake. The almonds on top with an added touch, the chocolate drizzle. Now it feels more like a Snickers, though. Like a vegan Snickers without them. Now you don't taste the Jack Daniels, so it's in the background. But, uh,. is Target, right? I'm the only way that feels real bad about Target. You have came. This is like CVS. Track that or not. It's okay. It's not the like smash hit that it used to be. The flavors are there. I think it's a good plant-based dessert, quote unquote, depending on how you look at the wool part. Three and a half and five. It's like an old friend you haven't seen in a long time. 
you don't really je you don't really vibe the same anymore. But you still got love for each other, you know. Think like Boys in the Hood without the murder. I don't remember that. Space 220. It's a harsh comparison because I love the food here a lot more. I love it in Space 220. Mm, it's about the same for me. And the views are a little more natural, if you know what I mean. Uh, I do think, as much as I love coming to this restaurant, it's probably one, probably the top three restaurants I enjoy coming. Disregard the food. It's like being inside. It needs a refurb. Horribly. 100% agree. It feels like walking in the 80s when you walk Absolutely in there. Absolutely agree. It's time. The whole seas needs a refurb. I agree, hundred percent. The seas and the land, they both need a refurb. Any thoughts on food? Food was great. Um, the tortellini, or the sorry, the ravioli actually made me appreciate mushroom more than I usually do. I wouldn't proactively come here for that since I'm not a mushroom person. But I think if you are a mushroom person, or if you're mushroom curious, or you just want to explore a new dish, I think this is a good choice. Um, the salad is eh, and the dessert is definitely not as good as it was before. She's probably right. But I want to know what you guys think. I know that we see a lot of mixed reactions about Coral Reef online, maybe the day of the interior, maybe the food isn't up to par. I want to know why you don't consider the Coral Reef when you come here, or if you do love the Coral Reef, tell us why in the comments below. If there's anything else you can see us do, of course, the comments is always a new place to find us. Hit the notification bell for see other videos like this and... We have new videos five days a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. Ah, Coral Reef. Oh, we'll see you soon. Be sure to subscribe and like and comment. And if you don't, Bear might meet himself into the seas. I might do that anyway. He's an island boy. Maybe it's time to get his scuba certification. What you heard the girl?